Welcome. Today's video will give you some tips and tricks on Google Chrome to help improve your workflow. To start, when we arrive on Chrome, we want to sign in. So to do that, we're going to click in the top bar and we're going to turn on Sync. Once here, we're going to enter our email. We're going to choose Google Workspace account and we're going to enter our password. Two-step verification for extra security, and we're in. Link your Chrome data will pop up. We want to link that data. Sometimes when you link, you may receive an error message. This requires me to put an extra passphrase in to secure my data and information. Once syncing, we'll notice that the bookmarks bar has appeared, and my Chrome extensions have begun to populate next to the URL bar. Sometimes some of those extensions have pop-ups and so we'll receive these pop-ups. We just need to close them down. Bookmarks are an excellent way to keep websites easily accessible and at your disposal. In order to access the bookmarks bar in Chrome, you're going to click on the three dots in the right-hand corner, top right-hand corner, go down to bookmarks, and then up to show bookmark bar. Now you can see the list of bookmarks that I have on the bookmarks bar. Bookmarks can also be organized into folders as you go along. Um, in order to add an additional folder, you simply right click on the bookmarks bar and you can add a folder or you can <clears throat> add a page. To add a bookmark to a site, click on the star in the URL bar. It will turn blue and it will ask you where you would like to place that bookmark. Once you have selected the location that you desire, you can click done and that bookmark will now be stored. For me, I have so many on the go here, it's actually stored way down at the end of my bookmarks bar. I can organize these by grabbing and dragging my bookmark and placing it where I would like. I can also remove a bookmark by right clicking on it and going down and deleting it. The other way that we can add bookmarks is by grabbing the little icon next to the name in the URL and dragging it onto our bookmarks bar or into a folder and then to where exactly we would like it in that folder. So for me, I'm going to place this one on my bookmark bar here. <clears throat> now the nice thing about this, see how it takes up so much space? I can right click, I can edit, and I can change the name of the site to what I would like it to be. I can click save and now it takes up less real estate. Alternatively, if I have a, a bookmark that I would like to have just the icon, I can right click, edit, I can delete the name entirely, click save, and now it's just the icon on my bookmark bar. I can then drag it to whatever location I would like on the bookmarks bar for me to have access to it. Another way to access our bookmarks, especially if you have many, is to come in and go to bookmarks and bookmark manager. Once here, we'll see on the left hand side all of our bookmarks files and folders, as well as the bookmarks here that we can then interact with. We can edit, delete, and so on and so forth. Another great feature of Chrome is the ability to open specific pages every time you start it up. To do that, we go over to the three dots, scroll down to settings, and then over on the left hand side on startup. Now we have three choices. Open the new tab page, continue where you left off, which will leave you off on the page that was last opened in Chrome, or open a specific page or set of pages. When we click that specific set of pages, we have the choice of adding a new page or using all current pages that are open. So we can click add a new page and type in the URL, or alternatively, if we use the current pages, if you wanna save yourself from having to type all of those uh, different URLs, if you want multiple pages open when you open Chrome, you can have those pages open and then run through this process, click use current pages and all current pages will populate. Then next time you open up Chrome, all of those pages will open up. So maybe you wanna open up Power Teacher and School Zone and your Google Drive and your Gmail. You would be able to have those all open up every morning when you start up your computer. Another feature in Chrome, access through the settings. So again, three dots down to settings will bring you to this page. If you scroll down a little bit to the appearance, you can choose what the home button does. So the home button is here next to the URL bar. 
You can have, if, if you click the home button, it will take you to a new tab page, or you can have it set so that it automatically redirects you to another, to a specific web page. So for me, if I have it set to go to school zone, if I'm on a, any tab, as soon as I click that home button, it's going to redirect me to school zone. Another feature in Chrome is the ability to pin your tabs. Pinning tabs allows you to free up some real estate on your uh, tab bar in order to allow you to have more tabs open and still see what each of those tabs are. So for myself, I like to use pinning tabs for tabs that I often have open for my workflow. So my drive, if I right click on the tab, scroll down to pin, it will minimize so all I see is the icon of the tab. Google Keep, I pin. Google Classroom, pin. If I want, I can pin the web page down. You can pin any tab you want, and you'll notice that they all condense nicely on the side, and that allows you to free up more real estate for uh, other tabs. The other nice bonus is, if you accidentally close out of Chrome entirely, when you go to reopen Chrome, all of those tabs reopen for you. And so you haven't lost your place in your work. Continuing on with our tabs bar, another option that you have is to group tabs. To do that, we simply right click on a tab, scroll down and add to new group. From here we can name this group, so maybe this is my work group. Um, and I can also in here change the color of that tab to make it identify. You'll notice that it highlights around the tab in a specific color. Now, if I want to add more tabs into that group, I simply drag and drop them. And now you'll see that it, the new tab has also highlighted in purple there. And so is this one. Um, I can add many more tabs or I can have two separate groups or multiple groups. Maybe this one is research and it's going to be orange. And I'm going to put, oops. So new group, research, orange, yes. And then I'm going to grab this tab here and I'm going to drag it in. Now I could also grab a tab from a different group and move it in to this one. So this allows me to, to organize my tabs so that I can more easily access the ones that I'm using for specific uh, projects that I'm working on. I can also click on the title of the tab and it will zip it down kind of like pinning, only it's not pinned, it just pulls all those tabs down so that we have more uh, real estate on the, the tab bar. So I can have multiple groups going on, um, but do note they aren't pinned. Uh, so when you do close out of Chrome, they will not reopen with the Chrome browser. Finally with tabs, if we accidentally close out of our uh, Chrome browser and we lose the web pages that we were working on, we can simply come over to the three dots, scroll down to history, and then you can see recently closed tabs and you'll be able to access those tabs that you recently closed. If you are assigned into Chrome on multiple devices, you can also see uh, the tabs that are open on those devices and you can have the ability to open those um, as well. Um, Another thing I'd like to point out is the URL bar. The URL bar, um, if we click on it, a couple of options pop up and we have the ability here to send this page to another device. So I could send this to my phone or to another laptop that I'm working on or another computer, whatever the case might be. It's sending to devices that I'm signed into. Um, again, we have the ability to bookmark but we also have the ability to create a QR code. So if you're using QR codes in your classroom or in for meetings and whatnot, uh, you have the ability here to click the button and it will create a QR code for you. You simply download it and put it into the document you're working with and you have uh, the ability to scan that from uh, a phone and link directly to the web page. It's a great way to get students to websites that you want them on uh, without them having to type in the links. Extensions are another way to leverage the power of, of Google Chrome. These can be found in the Chrome Web Store. If you want to access that on the left hand side of your bar here under Apps, Chrome Web Store, and you will find yourself taken directly there. From there you can search for uh, 
extensions. You'll see that I have a number of extensions here. I can view and manage my extensions and it's important to do this because sometimes when Chrome extend, when Chrome updates, extensions uh, no longer have the same functionality within Chrome until the, the app designers go in and fix their code to align with the new changes to Chrome. So that can cause some freezes. In particular, uh, examples that come to mind was uh, grid view and Google Meet didn't jive and so that had to be pulled down for a while. Um, to manage my extensions I simply click on the puzzle piece here next to my na uh, next to my Google icon and from here I can see all of my uh, Chrome extensions. I can pin them to the bar so that they appear up here. As soon as I pin it the icon appears here so that I can access that. Uh, I can unpin it and remove it and minimize how many extensions are there. I can click on the three dots next to a Chrome extension and it will take me directly to the Chrome Web Store where that uh, extension is located. Or I can access the options for that or remove it from Chrome. So if you ever have issues with Chrome, uh, test out your extensions. It could be an extension that's causing the blockage in Chrome and you just simply have to click remove from Chrome and it will uh, hopefully you start to solve your problem with your extensions. Another way to access that is to go to the three dots, more tools, and then extensions. This will take you to your extension manager where you can see that you have toggle on and off switches for uh, your for the various extensions. You can remove them directly from here. You can go straight uh, link to them in the Chrome Web Store, um, but you can toggle them on and off as you please to test whether or not they're causing the problems that you might be experiencing with uh, various programs. One more excellent feature for Chrome is the ability to control YouTube from any tab. So if I open up YouTube and I decide to play a video, okay, this is Blythe Evans and today's topic, top five assessment time savers with Google Classroom. You'll notice Classroom. in the right hand corner, if I'm just going already... to mute the video for the time being, but in the right hand corner, there is an icon that has shown up next to uh, the extension manager and also next to my uh, Chrome icon. That is the control your music videos and more. When I click on that, I get a player. And from here, I can play my Chrome video, and you'll notice that it will begin playing if I put the audio in. Help you to keep your work workflow going and provide timely feedback. I can to seek forward, assignment. and it will I've jump forward a, a few work. seconds every time when I click, I click that, or backwards if I need to rewind. I can also a minimize and, a and enter box. picture in picture now mode. In the right -hand so side, Chrome has now have the gone into the bottom corner. When I click on I can again and have it expand. How to do this again? But that allows me to control Chrome even when I'm on a different tab. I still have the ability to control Chrome and pause the video that's playing. Hopefully you found these tips and tricks useful and that you'll be able to start implementing them in your workflow immediately. Thank you for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you next time.